Are you wondering what the difference is between a water bath canner and a pressure canner? Well, look no further. Today, I have your answer. It's Jody with All About the Harvest. And today we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the difference between water bath canning and pressure canning. And we're gonna talk about the equipment as well as the type of foods you can can using each method. For all things food related, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to be notified when I release a new video each Wednesday. So the first method we're going to talk about is the water bath canning method. And the water bath canning method is really where I recommend beginners to start. And that's because you don't need any specialized equipment. This is a nice big stock pot that you can use for water bath canning. Water bath canning requires you to put water in a stock pot and the water must cover your mason jars by at least one inch. You'll also want some additional headspace above that because as water boils, it needs some more room. So this is a 20 quart stock pot that I purchased on Amazon. I can put the link in the description below. I like this particular stock pot because this can be used on glass top stoves as well as conventional stoves and gas stoves. So that's why I like this particular stock pot. There's some other water bath canning stock pots out there that are, they're like black with white speckles. They're called granite ware. And those can't be used on flat top surfaces because the bottom has a ripple and they're not able to be used on flat top surfaces. So I prefer this particular stock pot. I like it a lot because I can use this for making soups and my bone broths and other meals that would require a big stock pot. So this is nice because I use it for multiple different things. With water bath canning, as I mentioned, you'll fill this full with water up to at least one inch covering your jars. With the stock pot or with the pressure canner, you do need to have some sort of rack in the bottom of your canner because you don't want your mason jars to be directly on the bottom of the canner. So you can purchase separate racks for the canners. There's also ways to make your own, and I can go over that in another video if anyone's interested. But that's the basics of water bath canning. So it's water, and if you put your jars in, the water must cover the jars. You're gonna boil them and for a certain amount of time. Now you're always following a safe, tested, and approved recipe. For today's purposes, I just wanna go over the equipment and then how it's different how each one is different. So from an equipment perspective, that is the type of equipment that you'll need for water bath canning. Now from pressure canning perspective, you actually need to have a pressure canner. It cannot be a pressure cooker. It has to be a pressure canner. Now it can be a pressure canner that is a pressure cooker. So for example, this is a pressure cooker, but it's also a pressure canner. There are certain things like instant pots. Those are pressure cookers, but they are not pressure canners. Pressure canners have some sort of gauge to be able to tell specifically how much pressure is being used in that canner at that time. With an instant pot, there is no pressure gauge to be able to tell the amount of pressure and thus it cannot be used for canning. Now there are different kinds of pressure canners. This is the Presto pressure canner, it's a 23 quart. I like this because A, it's lightweight and I can actually double stack pints in here. So I can do two layers of pints in here. So I could actually can 20 pints at a time. And that's why I like this. Now there is another pressure canner variety on the market. And 
that is the All-American. It is much more expensive. It's heavy duty. So one of the things with the All-American is it doesn't have a rubber seal. You'll actually screw the lid on. And so one thing that people like about that is you'll never have to replace your rubber gasket. I'm not actually worried about that. I like the fact that this is lighter. It's not as heavy. You do want to read your manufacturer book for your stove to see if it can be canned on. But I have used this particular pressure canner on glass top stove for almost 10 years and I haven't had any issues with it. So let me show you a little bit more about the pressure canner and how it's different. So right here, this comes off and this goes over a vent and this is where steam will come out. So the difference with the pressure canner versus the water bath canner is that the pressure canner can actually get higher in temperature. This can reach 240 degrees and that means that this can actually be used to can low acid foods, which we're going to talk about uh, in a bit. The how it does that is steam builds up inside the canner. It comes out this vent and then that allows and then you cover it, right? So you cover it and then that that steam builds up in here. It builds up that pressure, which increases the temperature and therefore you can pressure can low acid foods safely. Now, a lot of people are afraid of pressure canners because they've heard stories of pressure canners blowing up and things like that. And so in this day and age, if you're getting a new pressure canner now, that's less likely going to be a problem. Although it can happen, but generally speaking, you don't have to worry about your pressure canner blowing up. The reason is because there are a couple safety mechanisms on pressure canners today that will prevent that from happening. So you'll see right here is a little seal and this seal will pop right out if there was too much pressure. It will release the pressure for you. So this particular one here comes up and this will sputter and this also helps with some of that um, pressure that this particular one here is the one that is your safety valve. So if there's too much pressure, this will pop right off. And while we have the top off, the other thing I'm going to show you is there is a gasket in here. And that's how this gets a nice tight seal. Now the gaskets come out. The gaskets come right out. And you should wash these and these will need to be replaced. I'm just going to put it back in there. You'll read your manufacturer's book on how to take care of these. Uh, but for today's purposes, I'm just kind of showing you the differences. Then it tells you on the lid where to line it up. And then you close it. It's sealed. Okay. So this is how the pressure canner works. Now right here is a pressure gauge. So the different canners have different types of pressure gauges. This particular canner has what we call a dial gauge. When you're making your recipe, your dial gauge is what you're going to look at because each recipe requires a different amount of pressure. So you need to know what pressure you're using. So you'll use this dial gauge to make sure that you're above the recommended pressure when canning that recipe. Some canners have a, what's called a weighted gauge and that gauge it's usually circular in shape and you would rest it on there and you would turn it based on how many pounds of pressure, 5, 10, 15 pounds of pressure and then that, that weighted gauge is what you use to determine the amount of your pressure. When that starts jiggling it makes a certain noise and you know you've reached that amount of pressure. I really like this particular model of pressure canner because it has the dial gauge. I don't have to worry about listening for jiggling. I 
don't have to worry about any of that. I just watch the gauge. Now with pressure canners, specifically ones with dial gauges, you do want to get these tested to make sure that the pressure that it's showing on the gauge is actually the pressure that is really inside it. And in our area, and in most areas, you can go to your local UW Extension office, uh, or University Extension office. I said UW because in Wisconsin, it's University of Wisconsin. But your University Extension office, and they will test it for you. I believe you can also send it into the manufacturer, and they will be able to test it for you. Now, if you have the weighted gauge, you don't need to test that because the weight is never going to change. So you don't have to change the weighted gauge. Some pressure canners have a weighted gauge and a dial gauge, in which case you could just rely on the weighted gauge versus the dial gauge. So I brought my pressure canner in this year and had them test it. And they tested it and then they looked at my ring as well, uh, my gasket as well. I haven't had to replace this yet and I just asked them do I need to replace it you know based on how it looks and she actually told me no it looks really good so I haven't replaced it yet but I know manufacturer recommends replacing it I think every three years and it also depends on I guess how much you can and how well you take care of it I, I still keep mine in the original box I take care of it the manufacturer recommends um, lubricating the ring, and so I do that as well. So that's pressure canner, kind of how it works, and some of the things you need to know about pressure canning. So now let's talk about the differences and what types of food you can can in each. So in the water bath canner, you can can foods that are high acid foods. High acid foods would be things like fruits, acidified tomatoes, meaning that they're acidified with lemon juice or you could use vinegar. You can do fruit juices, you can do pickled vegetables, again that vinegar makes them a higher acid food so then they're safe to be water bath canned. You can do things like pie fillings, again that's a fruit based item. You can do salsas. You can do jams and jellies. So those are some of the items that you can can in the water bath canner. In the pressure canner, you can can vegetables that aren't pickled. So you could do, uh, I've done corn. I've done just canned corn in the pressure canner. Um, you can do meats and broths and soups in this pressure canner. So the big thing about the pressure canner is you can safely can those foods that are at a higher risk of getting botulism. When you can it at 240 degrees, it kills that bacteria. So therefore, it, they're, they're safe in the pressure canner. So that's the basics between the two canner types and the type of foods that you can can in each. Again, I recommend people start with the water bath canner. The beauty of it is you, when you're buying a stock pot like this, you can use this for other things aside from just for canning. So that's nice. You may already have one at home. This is a 20 quart. And this is nice because it's easy, it's simple, you don't have to worry about the pressure canning and the dial gauge and all the different things that you have to worry about with pressure canning. Usually water bath canning is the place to start. You get your feet wet with canning, you understand canning, and then you can progress to the pressure canning, which is a little bit more advanced and people seem to get a little bit more nervous about pressure canning. So I would recommend starting here and then progressing here. I also have an intro to canning guide and I will post a link to that in the description below this video. It is an eight page interactive guide that helps you understand more about canning and helps you determine if canning is something that you want to start doing. I follow only safe, tested and approved canning recipes. 
and procedures. If you're interested in canning and would like more information, I will put a link to my canning course waitlist in the description below this video. So be sure to get on that waiting list so you can be notified when I launch that canning course. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel where I release more videos like this each Wednesday. If you know somebody that may be interested in canning, please share this video with them. Well, that's it for today. I wish you safe and happy canning.